Okay, so what we're looking at here is the source on the left. In this case, we're gonna use a keyboard. It goes into an input. That input sends a signal into the tube, and then we've got the output. Now, the output is the overall sound that we hear of everything. The output here is the, let's change the color on this. Yeah. This is the sounds. Overall volume level. Over here is our original sound. And then here, <clears throat> the input has to do with the sound level that goes into the tube. Now the tube colors the sound. Let's move it this way a little bit so I have more room to write. So the tube, this colors the sound. Changes the tone of the sound. So more equals a brighter, more harmonics, more kind of saturated. We, these are the words we say, like more harmonics, more saturated. Ultimately, if you overdrive hard enough, you're going to get into distortion. So more equals brighter and eventually distorted. And less equals cleaner. Now tubes, just in general, are a warm sound. It's like a nice, warm, rich tone. And the more you drive into the tube, the more, brighted, more, more bright and more distorted it's going to get. And um, I think, do I have a good way to show you this with a plugin? I'm trying to think if any of my UAD plugins have a good picture of this happening. I'm not really sure. And so over here, this input knob here is how much, how, how, how much signal we're going to send into the tube. Like it's the signal level going into the tube. And hopefully, y'all understand this. Anthony Martinez, you're back. Yay. Cool. All right, so I hope that these things are relatively, like, I hope you're getting an idea of what this means. So. Essentially, um, what's a good way to explain this? Uh, it's like Anthony, you only say it, uh, uh, sorry, Jeffrey, right? Jeffrey Applewhite. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> don't just Tony like that. <laughs> I see where you're going with that. Nice. I'm glad you got my back. Um, so let's say I have a sound and my keyboard sound here. Let's, here. let's just see if I can play it for you, if I can show you. So let's go over here and I've got my keyboard sound. And I'm just going to play a little 
little thing like that. Okay, so I have this going on here. Now if I turn the gain down, if I zoom in on this, the more I turn this up, the more I turn this up, the more, and this one here, you see we got a little EQ going on here as well. gain up here, here I've adds distortion into the sound. Here, let's get the, let's see if our volume level here. And then here I can also adjust my EQ. And with this one here, you can actually change what type of amp it is. And if I don't want any distortion, I can adjust my volume level on this side over here. This is because this is after everything. And if I want more distortion, here it's getting more distortion. I'm just adding like distortion gain. Well, the amp is, I mean, it's, it's a good question because it's like, well, for all intents and purposes, the answer is really no. It's not just adding distortion and gain. Uh, there's more to it than that, but for like practical purpose, what are people hearing kind of? I mean, it's, it's, there's, there's more to it than that. And it really has to do with the signal flow here. I'm actually not sure. Let me, you know what, let me hear. I'm actually not sure where those EQs are in the whole process of things. I'm gonna grab my, uh, where's my, I'm gonna grab this thing here and plug this in so we can actually have some, uh, Put, let me just arrange these things. So, do 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 do. So I can use my UAD plugins. I want to use my UAD plugins. Boop. Plug you in. Make sure you're on. You are on. Good. Move things around a little bit. Did I just get a warning? I did not just get a warning. Good. Okay, cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to actually add in a real preamp here and, and not this one. Because it's like too much. It's too it's too guitar-y. Um and I want to show you all this a little bit better. So we're going to go in here and go to my plugins and y'all are on my main screen. Yeah, cool. We're going to my plugins in here. We're going to go to the powered plugins and we're going to go to mono. And let's find the. Six ten. Here we go. I have a six ten right here. Do they have a seven ten? No. All right. Let's use a six ten. Or actually, that is a compressor. 
What's this one? I'll just use that 610, even though it's not exactly the one I wanted. But I'm just, okay. Just see what the B one looks like. I never really used the, okay. So here we go. <clears throat> So here's an example of what I'm talking about. It, so if I go in here and I say, here is, I've got my level. And if I push this up, you're gonna hear it start to distort things and overdrive the sound a little bit. But let's say that I want this clean sound here, more or less clean, but I just want it to be louder. So I can turn on my output down here, and you hear how it gets louder, but doesn't add any of the distortion in. But at the same time, if I wanted my sound to be really quiet, I can turn the output down here, but let's say I want it to be really quiet, but very distorty, and a lot of harmonics, I can turn this up right here. Start to hear more of those kind of overtones in there. And now this can be turned up or down. I hope that makes some kind of sense there. Does the volume actually get louder? The volume will get louder, yeah. Uh, because you're actually, you are increasing the level, but you're increasing the level here, on here on the input side. And it's, so it's, what it's doing is it's getting louder, but it's getting louder into the tube right here. And when we get louder into the tube, hold on, let me move this up to the corner. When we get louder into the tube, it's gonna, it's gonna add more of those harmonic overtones to the sound. And then what happens is, that overall sound, you're gonna turn it up or down using this output knob right here. All right, and uh, RJ, if you're, if you're paying attention right now, let me know if this is kind of how you understand it and if you have anything to add to this. All right, uh, what, what? Um, so that's, that's, that's what this means. And what's important about this is to understand is that this order matters. If you wanna turn up your level, you're not just gonna, it's, it, you're not just gonna necessarily reach for this one unless it's like you wanna turn it up and just exactly the sound that you've got going in right now, that's what you wanna have, then you're gonna turn this one up here on the output side. But if you wanted to actually it kind of add some overtones to things and kind of make the sound a little bit more of a like a warmer bigger like a warmer kind of sound and maybe even a little bit distorted or saturated uh, you would actually turn this one up here and maybe even turn this one down over here on the output side because as you turn this input up it's going to make things louder but you may not want your overall level to increase uh, so you would turn this one down here and this is this applies to a lot of stuff, not just amps, but it also applies to like compression and stuff like that. So, and we can take a look at that in a second. Let's, for now, let's go ahead and put, let's go back into Ableton Live and let's go. I'm in the key of C. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this, let's move this up an octave. Mm, 
And so it really, so you're saying that electro electro harmonics pedal, um, it really allows you to control the tone of things a lot. Is that what you're saying? There we go. Let's turn this down here. Nice. See how I can dial in just a little bit of tone right here. That's interesting. What you're talking about with the electroharmonics knob. Okay, so I got this sound here. Uh, that's a cool sound. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over here to this and my bass. Add inserts to the output channel. Add inserts to the output channel. Um, Steven, what are you talking about? Is it feasible to add inserts to the output channel? What do you mean output channel? You mean, you're talking about on this UAD thing here? The output over here? I'm not really sure what I mean, uh, if I understand what you mean by feasible to add inserts to the output channel. Uh, well, I mean, inserts to the output channel here, probably what you're, probably what would be the equivalent of that would just be putting uh, plugins after the UAD 610 right here. And that would essentially be an insert after this output here. Um, there's no way to put an insert inside of here. You can't have the insert inside the plugin. So, all right, so what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and here, let me just do this real quick. Hold on one second. We're going to. I'm just going to tune this bass drum, this uh, bass up a little bit. Now what I want to do is I want to shape this tone a little bit to give it the sound that I want. And so what I'm going to do here is essentially, we're going back to our guitar pedal here, this effect chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some effects on this to kind of give this the tone that I want it to have. And I want you to pay attention to what we're going to do here. So first of all, I want to increase the sustain of this one a little bit and we can do that with a bit of compression here. And it's kind of weird to think about like a compressor is going to increase our sustain. And different people are obviously going to do this differently. I don't, I don't, um, you know, everybody's going to do this a slightly different way. There's, there's a few different ways to do it. All I want to do is I'll just do this. And you hear how that just increased the sustain so we can hear the sound longer, right? And so let's just talk a little bit about how we just did this. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, yeah, we're still looking at my computer screen. Good, okay, I'm just making sure we're looking at the right thing. Because <clears throat> it's all, it all ties into how this works. It's the same thing but it's just now we're, used, we're talking about with a compressor instead of with this gain stage here. So let's talk about this with the compressor here.
So with the compressor, uh, this compressor has a threshold and a makeup knob. And the makeup knob is essentially the output. And the threshold <clears throat> is, uh, is where the compressor actually starts to compress. And actually, this is a good time to ask this question. <clears throat> How many people would like me to do a dedicated lesson to compressors? Not, not the whole lesson, but like a de dedicated, let's say, half hour or hour section just to compressors. You? Okay. Joanna says me. Uh, yes. Yes. I'm getting the general vibe that it's probably going to be pretty useful if I dedicate some time just to uh, compressors. Okay, cool. So that's no problem at all. Great. Um, not today. But uh, maybe tomorrow or the next day or something. Um, <clears throat> mixing low end sounds. Yeah, yeah, totally. We can. <laughs> yes, yes, compression. We can. Uh, we can definitely talk about low end. I think that's a really important thing to talk about. Okay, cool. Yep, definitely. We'll uh, we'll talk about uh, compressors here one day. But right now, what I want to do is I want to show you this here. I want to show you two different styles of compressors. One is this one here that has a threshold. And another one is kind of related to what we were just talking about with our, uh, our preamp. And it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a, uh, here, wait, let's use a different color one. It doesn't have a threshold. What it has is, yeah, is it just has an input knob. And it kind of works the same way as our uh, 610 or the 710, well, the amps we were just looking at here. So with this compressor, this 1176, which is a really famous limiter compressor. Let me get it so you can actually see my screen here. The UA 1176. And this one has an input and an output and a ratio. Those are the, th the main things it has. It also has attack and release, um, but it has an input and output and a ratio, and there's no threshold. This one here has input here, we'll just do this input and then output and a ratio, but it does not have a threshold. And that's a super important uh, thing to keep in mind. There's no, th there's no threshold. So the input, what happens is this one has a locked, like a locked threshold. So the way compressors work is, if I have my, here's a level, and here's time. So if I have a thing that's like, like a sound that sounds like this, that's like a, Boom, 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 like that, something like that. Well, if I set my threshold like this, that's where the compressor is going to actually start, start working. Um, and RJ says, so the input on the UA1176 acts as the threshold, you guess, kind of. It doesn't act as the threshold. Uh, it, well, here, I'm, I'm going to explain it right now. So this is our threshold. Now, on a lot of mixers, uh, sorry, a lot of compressors that have a threshold knob, you can turn that threshold up and down, and you can make it, it starts working more and more, or less and less, or whatever. So if we go back over here, and we, let's turn, let's, 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 let's look at uh, the regular compressor that comes with Ableton Live, not the glue compressor. But if we look at this compressor here, there's actually a, a, a thing here where 
can see. You can see the peaks and the valleys there. Right? And if I turn my threshold down, you can see that's the, that's the threshold line in relation to the, the, the waveform. And the yellow line is showing me my gain reduction, how much it's actually turning the gain down each time it crosses that threshold. So the more I turn my ratio up, the more I turn my threshold down, oh wait, hold on, let's turn the makeup off. It's gonna make everything quieter. Here it gets quieter. Right? So that's what our threshold is doing. It's basically turning on and off the it's the it's the it's the level where the threshold where the compressor starts working. That's what the threshold does. So if we go back here and look at this. We have our line there, that's our threshold. Wait, hold on a second. Why is this? Why are you so small? Hold on one second, let me just get this up and running again. No? No, no, no. Hold on, sorry, let me. Come on. Oh, quick time. I'm gonna quick, quick time real quick. I'm gonna plug this back in. Quick time. Come on, buddy. There we go. Okay. So, uh, with something like an 1176, instead of you moving the threshold up and down, what you do is you adjust the inputs. and you're gonna make the level louder or softer. So this level here, let's see how can we write this. I don't really have enough space here. So on normal mixers, sorry, mixers on normal compressors, and determine okay so on normal compressors you adjust the threshold to determine when the compressor starts compressing but on 1176, we have our level. And time again. What happens is the threshold is fixed in place. And then what you do is you use the gain knob to 
to make the volume level of the audio louder or softer. Wait, how can I do that? Wait, hold on a second. So the input gain knob controls the level of the incoming signal. Higher gain equals louder signal and more compression because it's hitting that threshold. More. This applies to the 1176, this one. This one here on the screen right now, this guy. And any, any, uh, any compressor like it, there's more compressors out there that use, I'm just, this is the one that, example I'm using, but there's a lot more that are like this. <clears throat> and then a lower gain equals less Compression. All right. So, same thing as with our amps, with our amplifier, our preamp, where we have a tube in here, same thing. Input, more input, it's going to be hitting that tube harder and it's going to be giving you that tube sound, more of the tube sound. And then you can control the overall output level with your output knob. And then on here, same thing with this 1176. You have here, you have the input, uh, which controls the input level, and real in reality, this controls the compression level. Uh, actually, well, sorry, not compression, but the threshold level. The output is the overall sound output. And then the ratio, of course, is how much compression. which again, we'll talk about this in another class. Uh, we'll, go, we'll dive deep into compressors, uh, which we're actually kind of doing, so keep this in mind because this is all super, super important for understanding compressors. So if I wanna get that, let's go back to my bass sound and let's get that sustained bass sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get rid of this one. I don't want that one. So in here, I'm gonna turn this on. And if we look over here on the right-hand side, my meter is my gain reduction. So the more that meter turns down, the more compression is being added to the signal. It's turning the signal down. So if I want less here, my input, the more I turn it up, the more it's just flatlining that compressor over here. You can see it's just killing it. If I turn it down, right, you can see it's still compressing. I, I guess there's a lot of, uh, Output here. Let me let's set this up from here. There we go. So if I adjust my output, and what I'm doing is I'm adjusting my output level down here on my sampler. 
if I go down to minus 16 dB, now it's finally not hitting anything at all. Now if I want to hear more of this, which I do, I can turn up my track level here, and I can turn up my output. Okay, so now we can hear that bass sound better. Well, it depends on, I guess, if you're listening on decent speakers or headphones. So now, okay, if I want to go ahead and drive this in harder, and as I hit it harder, it's turning up the level of the sound because it's, I'm changing the gain on the input. So I'm turning my output down over here. But we can hear now, it's actually affecting our sustain, how long the sound is being held. Let's turn these. And you can add here, it's adding a little distortion into it as well. That distortion is actually, sorry. Some of it was coming from the output of Able to Live. I turn this up a little bit more. This one has a cool feature actually where you can hold down shift and click on the ratio knobs. The question is, how would you personally use it to mix this? Well, this here is not really, this is not using the compressor for mixing. This is using the compressor to create the sound. This is using the compressor for sound design because if I don't use the compressor, my, my bass is going to sound like this. And that's okay, but it doesn't have any sustain to it. If I wanted to sustain it, I can, I have two ways I can sustain it. I can sustain it like this. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to turn down my threshold. Let's get the attack up. Not that much. I can turn this way down. Here it's like changing the sound. Or I could do it with this one. Here it's getting a little bit more of that, it's getting more distorted in the beginning. But now it's not, we're not hearing it. Threshold on the glue compressor is actually a threshold. Uh, the threshold over here on normal compressors, you adjust the threshold to determine when the compressor starts compressing. But I want to talk about that on a, on a different day. I don't want to talk about that right now. Right now, I don't want to get too deep into that. I, I'm kind of going in this with a little bit of hope that y'all understand a little bit about what compressors do. Um, but the threshold, it's the level at which the compressor actually starts to compress things. But I want to, like I said, I want to go into each part of the, the compressor uh, like in more detail on another day, not today. Really what I wanted to, to show to y'all, my, my whole point with this, is that, is that the, the, the signal flow is super, super important. Um, uh, this, yeah, so basically I'm here, so, so just so you know, I'm, I'm a teacher from SAE and basically I'm here. Uh, we're doing class from like two to six every day, two to six, six every day. Um, so essentially what's happening here is this, pre this preamp here, the sound goes into it and you get the input and the gain stage, the initial input goes into the tube and then it goes to the output and the output is controlling the overall signals. But if I want like a bright signal, I'll go into that tube. So let's go back over here and let's put a tube in here. So I got this, I got this uh, compressor here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here to my plugins and let's get this 610 in here. 
And I'll put the 610, actually, since we're doing this with plugins, I can just put the 610 wherever. And now, if I want like a really nasty sound, I can actually drive it harder here too. You know, nobody wants that sound, but. Right, and you can see I can mess around with this a little bit. So we can really wanted to distort it get like a real distorted sound we can right so all the stuff really matters in how we uh, like the signal stage like the gain stage and this is called gain staging here but it ties in a lot to what we talked about earlier with our effects chains. And now we're going to start talking about the effect chain here in a second. We're going to get back into the effect chains. Uh, New Orleans wants that sound. <laughs> New Orleans called. They want their sound back. Um, <clears throat> all right. So let's do this. Let's take a break. Everybody be back here at 4.05. And um, just so you all know... Uh, Today, hold on, let me just stop recording. So I'm gonna stop recording.